So, um, uh, this is a post, I knocked up a post there for the Theosophical Society of, um, you know, 2003 when we did our talk. Yeah. And um, I got so much data that it's, it's very difficult to decide what to put in and what to leave out. You know, when you talk of two decades of research period, uh, research period you're going to struggle to know what to put in. So I, I have struggled. I wanted to do two talks, but Dave was kindly, kindly enough to allow me one. So I condensed it. Well, there's so much missing. There's not really enough meat on the bone, but it will do as far as I'm concerned for now. So, before I, I start, start talking, I spent the last 10 years working uh, prior to retirement in the, uh, in the local university at uh, the University of Glamorgan, uh, which then became the University of South Wales. Um, before then, I was running my own business and whatever, so I had that near-death experience and it changed things. So, Anyway, this is, I suppose, I, you know, you know, it's, um, I used to send, be, before I start, I'm just going to cover this, right? I used to send links that were interesting to me. Now, this was sent in 2015, and the link highlighted in blue above it um, talks about uh, a link of Antarctic sea ice increasing. Right? Everyone, has everyone got a computer here? Yeah. Right. So, if you click on that link now, it takes you to a 2017 link, page. And you have to ask yourself why. Why is that occurring? Why does that occur? So, you know, it's the Washington Post, Washington Post, the Capital Weather Gang, Capital Weather Gang. And now, what is being pushed forward, and this is the one error in the book that I've made, <coughs> about climate change. Um, So there's a couple of quotes before before I start my presentation. I just want to. I'm probably preaching to the converted. Uh, what gets us into trouble is not what we know; it's what we know for sure that is not so. So science is saying one thing, religion is saying another. Whatever, whatever. You know. Science can't test for it, therefore it doesn't exist, or we'll ignore it, or we won't do anything about it, or whatever. And the other thing is, uh, this is where um, certain lecturers, tenured lecturers that I've got, that I worked with, or for, or whatever, it's difficult for a man to understand something when his salary depends upon him not. Hmm. And these two quotes are probably valuable to to why we're at this stage, why have we got here, and also the spiritual, I don't know whether spiritual is the right word, but whatever, um, what, why we've got here anyway, why we've got here. So, I'm going to start the talk, oh, in the book that I wrote in 2007, uh, Al Gore, there was eight or nine factual things that he, that he stated as fact that were get, getting us into a tremendous amount of trouble. And uh, if you do a YouTube search, in, Inconvenient Lies. Now, I, I reference his work. And I assumed at that time, I wrote right in the book, that he was not a liar. Uh, I know they're strong words. I know people, or, or certainly a mis misrepresents the truth. So, 
he's not looking inside himself for that truth, searching that truth, searching that wisdom that many, many people walk on that path search for. So, the great spiritual energy of orbs. So I just I just wanted to lay that down for everybody. I don't wanna I, I wanna try and get through all of this, but it's you know it's probably gonna be too difficult. Great spiritual energy of orbs, petroglyph, geoglyphs, and the creation of all things. How it works. Mm. You know, now this is mm. how many hours you got though? Sorry? <laughs> How many errors you've got? <laughs> How many errors I got? Yeah, yeah. Uh, have I asked the right questions? You, you know, you, you can. So the, the we've dealt with the some of these things. Uh, so what we're going to run through is the introduction categories, understanding, gain through the data predictions. You know, it's it's like why is science going to hit this brick wall? Why, why I think science is going to hit the brick wall. And there's some conclusions to it. So the formal research started in early 2000. Uh, we gave a talk, you know, again, I put a question mark to the Theosophical Society around 2003. Was it, was it this room, Dave? <laughs> um, downstairs, I thought. Yeah, it was downstairs. Uh, yeah. It was downstairs, I, th yeah, I think. In this room or something, yeah. yeah. Um, John here joined me when he was a young man. Um, and I... We spent a long time working up with energy, um, talking about energy, how energy flowed and worked. But that's... Again, a private, they were private conversations. You were 15 or yeah, was, younger. Yeah, or younger. You know, so I, I went to school with his dad, knew his mum. Diversified into film 2004 and 5. Uh, we met up. Sorry, can you change the background a little? I can't, I can't read it from here. The mm. color of the white background. Yeah, I think that's the color of the background. That's the color of the background, yeah. So you can't change it. It's just not, there'll be much more print for because the print can't mm. be read from here, it's too far. Yeah. Too far, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's all right. Right, we diver diversified film. into film 2004 and 5, right? When John joined me, um, we were taking 500 photographs a night. We had a failure rate, or a success rate, I suppose, of maybe 10%, or one in 10 photographs showed orbs. We didn't know what we were seeing, we didn't know what to expect. Eventually, you know, uh, 5,000 5, photographs every 10 nights. You imagine how many you take in those periods that I took off. We had, a, we had a meeting with a research biochemist who set up a research company and introduced us to a doctor of geology. Uh, he wrote a quote for the book. And um, I took 18 months off work, about 2004 and 5, and 2006 and 7, and published. Uh, then I published a book, self published, although I had a couple of printers inter interested. Orbs energy and miss the secrets of the ancients. Now, as I said, there is error. There are errors in it, and the one big big error is the reference to Al Gore. I have sympathy for him because he's my brother. You know, I don't mean my physical brother. All of us are, are linked to each other, whether my brother or sister or who you give him the talk to. Was your brother, no, 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 no. Uh, well, I, he's got five offspring and, and an island, I think, but uh, no, he's not my blood brother. So, so when when we were doing these, when we were taking these five hundred photographs each each night, or it moved to, it was the early digital age and blah blah blah, and the cameras wouldn't take that many, and it, you know. 
but we upped it and upped it and upped it. It was like a sliding scale. So we we suddenly came across different coloured orbs. I don't know whether you chose. So you got <coughs> the primary orb, the opaque orb, purple, blue, yellow, green, and whatever. Gold. We had. We we sort of began to understand how they functioned and worked. Right. It. It's going to be too much for for us or for me to explain in too much detail 20 plus years of work. So you just say, oh yeah, we, 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 ha we photographed. And even that, some of those would be suggestions rather than evidence. What were you focusing on? You took 500 photographs. Well, well, just take an enemy, just take them. Just click them. Just yeah, click them. Click Automatic them. setting. Oh. It was all this. So you 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 just take them, click them, click them, click them, click them. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this these these are now adults. They're working. Uh, he's assistant manager. The one bending down. Where's my pointer, pointer John? Because I don't want to drag the. Uh, Captured a few orbs at the back of the Sorry? I said captured a few orbs at the back of the Yeah. <laughs> but what 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 you can what you can see is where the paint you you know we don't we uh, these are in the early days now. Um we dyed a dust sheet, we just got dye long from a local craft shop just just up the road here or whatever, and uh you've got a couple of orbs now you can say, well, it's dust or whatever, or particle. But um, these things are not seen unless you... We had somebody in one of the talks, and uh, she was talking about, oh, they like velvet curtains. And I said, well, was it a dark velvet curtain? She said, oh, yeah, yeah, orbs like dark vel velvet curtains. Um, it was the Ishbourne Centre, one there in, mm. in Cheltenham. It's not in there. And uh, it's not in there. We, we haven't come prepared, really. Sure. And anyway, between... So what, what we what we got is a dyed dust sheet. And you can say, oh, yeah, well, they're dust. But they don't appear... They don't appear, right? So this should give it away. Dust does not appear on white surfaces. You know, it's counting so it's just in front of the lens, but it's not. Because if it was just in front of the lens that was creating this, it would be on the other side of the curtain. I don't want to go into too much detail because, you know, I won't get through what I need to get through. So we had it in rain lightning spelt wrong uh, day night rain hail fog snow heat and lightning um, that was the first uh, orbs that were attached to trees that we filmed we went to America Steve and I uh, John didn't go at the time um, we received what I what I'll point out is uh, see if I can point it. Oh, I can't. I haven't got the pointed. <coughs> what you got is a tube-like effect there, and I'll reference those later on. See the tube there. So that was in. Uh, in hotel or a spiritual retreat, there's a, a large orb just by above the tree. I zoomed in. I haven't shown them because there's so much, so much deep that I have gone, and uh, it moved towards the raccoon. Uh, that's Steve. That's on a dry night um, with a, a single orb by him. These are power stations. Uh, this is the first orb that we had that was. Oh, one of the earliest ones 
where you've got an orb conversion so it's an orb conversion convert into a bar now these are not going to make much sense unless you've done the research So what we, numbers of photographs of straightening orbs, or orbs and the direction that they're moving, and I'm going to show, um, these are the half moon by the substation now, the magnetic field. Sorry about this. Can I ask, do you ever see them with the naked eye? Or do they only show up on, yeah. uh, on camera? Yes. You see them with the naked eye? We'll, 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 we'll cover that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, just a, a little, one of the videos that we put together. And what we were doing is slowing these things down. These uh, this energy slowed around magnetic fields. In fact, I wrote to Hutchinson of the Hutchinson effect and um, asked, because he, he was giving a radio interview and he was talking about the plasma that he was creating using decommissioned um, Tesla coils from battleships. Well, it was what we were predicting and uh, he was creating these uh, uh, magnetic mists and it was the mists that we'd seen during that process and um, he was creating orbs well I sent him a couple of pictures of the orbs that we'd had the conversions and whatever and uh, all I got back from him was cool. that those, thi those things are cool man <laughs> right. so he's uh, this is that Canadian guy is it? A Canadian, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Fuses, um, and, uh, and gravity. And oh, that's yeah. right, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, it's an intermittent thing, so it's, it's like one of those things. So I wrote to Hutchinson, or the Hutchinson effect. Yeah. You know, the, anyway, this, I'll go back to this video. This is one of the videos in the early, you can see how young John is there and whatever. Well, what you've got is a compression of the orb hitting a magnetic field. We, we had it few seconds. I know it's, these things are poor because the technology was poor in those days. Uh, we went back there and we, all we got was a load of orbs, didn't we? Yeah. So, and it's, it's hit the magnetic field and, and pulled itself back. So it's like, the only, it's so, so we were coming across these things that were odd. And what we've obviously found out during that process, is that string theory is, is a fractal of nature, right? I don't know whether anyone studied string theory. We've had songs on it, yeah. We know what you're talking about. You know, but it's, it's supposedly to be a quantum. Well, he, even, even Einstein coined um, spooky action at a distance. You know, and it's like, you know, why does one particle tell what, you know, it's, there's, why is there a linkage, you know, but uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go too much into the science of things because it will, <laughs> well, I'll lose people. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we have a spiral galaxy, a spiral spin, many healers. Or, or any energy workers will feel these spirals or spins and you'll see them in megalithic structures or whatever uh, on the geoglyphs drawing these spirals this was a, this is a genuine photograph taken at uh, a stone circle and what we've got is magnetic mess illuminated by the magnetic spin just above the stone so you, you've got to ask yourself you, you know, whatever's happening, happening. You know. You could see that physically, could you? No, we couldn't see it. We could see it. In the, some things we can see in the flashlight. Yeah. When the when you add when you add an additional uh, light flash, you will see them, particularly in a peripheral vision. 
you know, on the sides or whatever, or, you know, and at certain times you will see these things. Many, many people have seen orbs, haven't they? You know, whether, whether um, you know, people will um, agree with it or not, this is one where we, we saw them in the flash night, right? So, what we have, I would like to point, but at this point I'm probably not going to be able to, right? So the first photograph, this, these are taken out of 50 sequential photographs. And uh, what you've got is a, a I can explain it if people want it explained. The crystal lattice of, of sedimentary stones, vertical. But, you know, I lose, lose only, only people that are geologists. So what, what we were watching, there's two flashes to the camera, first flash, second flash. One sets a focal length, the second sets, well, the ones that we were using, uh, uh, it's a pre-flash and a flash, right? So it's like a Charles Chaplin movie, bump, bump, flicker, and you can see these things moving. And you've got a glow. Now, Obviously, I've had some camera experts look at look at this now. They go, oh, well, yeah, yeah. Flashback. Oh, yeah, okay. So, in the middle section and the bottom, I asked John to put his hand in. You know, it's a young John at that. Put his hand on the stone. And he put his hand on the stone, right? He put his hand on that stone there. Uh, and the flashback stopped. Took his hand off it directly now. We're flashing and flashing and flashing, right? Took it off and that occurred. So we repeated that the second time and it occurred again. In focus, out of focus. It's like earth in electrical charge, right? So, and w we could see those things flashing like a child, like a flicker. Just a flick, you would see them flicking it. This is what they look at like close close up. And what we talk of now is the old bar wave. That is how we, the terminology we use. Uh, the wave can be linked to the serpent and the serpent mythology of the ancients. All right, see if I can, oh God. So, this was Dr. Peter Hodges first mentioned this to us. He, t he took us to the uh, number of megaliths in the Swansea Valley. And what you got is my dog. And she's watching a pen split bars. Can you see them? Just behind John? Can't see them. I'll click again now. So I'll uh, rerun this video now. So the dog has any has anyone got an animal, right? You'll see it run paired bars, see him? Yes. Can you see him? Yeah. Well, that, that, that is slow down, incredibly slow. Hmm. So you've got the, the bar converting it to the orb. You know, I can give you, I can get piles of evidence for it, you know. But unfortunately, you know, I haven't got the time, the life, the life, you know, I could come back every week, <coughs> you know. What, what exactly are we supposed to see in this film? I don't get any any idea. I can see the the, the dog oh, you moving. Didn't see it. Its head. You didn't see the two. Sorry. Yeah, it's probably because it is so far oh, back. Yeah, yeah. There's two. Split it, don't worry. Don't worry about it. Just. Yeah. You know, he wants to see it. I have sights. Not. Run it again. So DJ Captain, I can yeah, see. Yeah, I really got an idea. Yeah. 
Well, uh, you know, it's just prana or chi or life force or whatever. Mm. You know, if you really want to know, yeah. you know, simple answers. But, you know, nothing is that simple when you look at it. Well, so, you see it the first time, but when you play the point it, time, point it out, you, you'll yeah. see it, you know. But, uh, right, so the what you, the dog is looking in this direction. Right. Okay. There's a bar, paired bars running across okay. here yeah. beyond yeah. John. You can just see it, Paul, you can't see where it goes. Do it one more time. From 15 feet, you can't see it, Paul. Try once more. Yeah. Well, you know, where anyone who's had a cat or a dog and watching something in the, in yeah. the, oh, yeah. they watch, yeah. you know, anybody who's seen that, you know. That's what they're watching. It should be mentioned, Paul, that the dog is also an old expert in yeah. Yeah, well. 15 years. Everybody yeah, that's right. Well, she was, uh, you, you can know, a tune. So, so what we're looking at, and this is slow down. Uh, there. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. yeah. See, and it's behind John's back. John John was on Penmine Burrows holding the blanket up uh, because the, tri the tripod, the fishing tripod had blown down and those two paired bars, which are symbols of the I Ching, which I haven't included in this talk because I'm, you know, I don't, I don't want it to go on too long because it's going to bore. <sighs> <laughs> well, it's just so much at once. There's so much, there's so much of it that it what gets you into trouble is what you know. <laughs> that even so, like a black hole. How many believe in black holes then? Yeah, well, there you go then. You know, you're gonna have to let go of all of that before you, you know, the vacuum of space. Hands up. Well, I used to. But no, no. No, the don't accept that space is a vacuum. No, the, the, all right, right. Yeah, the well, that's that. That's a vacuum. that's a start, yeah. because the vacuum cannot exist. Yeah. You know, how do you get light through a vacuum? How do you get light through a vacuum if if light is energy? So the transference of energy, and we've got these are some of these are sequenced. These are tubes. That's the energy to trees, that's the energy to trees, you know, that, that's somebody working with energy, you know, anybody who's a healer. That's for people and all surrounding people. Yeah, you will. You will and you won't. Yeah. Um, certain rock festivals we took a number of photographs in and there were thousands, you know, but... So, um, I'll just carry on. The understanding that we gained from the study day, because this is old stuff, this is really old to me. It doesn't, do you know what I mean? I, I want to, I want to move it on, but you know, it, it, you know, I'll you keep get, on. You've got to get the explaining what it is first, that's what. So, these are two cameras that, everyone says it's dust in front of the lens and, <laughs> These are two cameras stacked on top of each other. I'm not saying you're going to get this all the time. You're not going to get a, an orb to pose for you and take a photograph. These are random events. These are hard work. These are 500 images of which 10% or maybe even 5% were, were cut. And the rest of it were thrown in the bin or deleted. Right? But these were cameras stacked. Uh... The furthest one here is a Kodak 3.1, which is, you know, and this is a Vivitar, I think it was a 5 million pixel camera. So they're stacked and they clicked together. And we captured the same orb on that one, or that one. So, unless the dust is in front of both those two lenses, you're going to struggle. All right. Can any, everyone got that? The biochemist who set um, uh, 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 up a research company for us called Touchstone Health suggested that uh, what I'd shown her in the videos and whatever, because I, you know, I got 400, 500 videos and maybe even, you know, I can just go on. 
you know, I'm, I haven't got the time to repeat the research anymore. Um, so what we have is these are under the electron microscope of webs that uh, are fiber bonds, whatever you want to call, and these are from our study data. And if you if you say well, as above so below, if if that's the um, the understanding, that's my understanding of as above so below fractal string theory, from the small to the big, from the big to the small, all is the same. When you look inside of yourself, you find the universe inside yourself. And that is, that is about it, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. All right, and I'm going backwards now. <laughs> and uh, i got to find that pointer sometime. But, uh, so anyway, so Kerry, um, the biochemist, uh, that didn't work out uh, for a number of reasons. So this is, uh, I, I just put these things in uh, behind... Um, the orb with the hole in it has moved towards the hand and uh, it's behind the hand. Um, see the shadow on there as well? So, behind the dozen rods, and you can see it in front of I probably haven't put that much in front, but uh, there's plenty of it. This is an interesting uh, series of photographs. Uh, what you've got is the D shaped. And the orb, uh, so we're flashing off one, two, three. And those are one, two, three images. What you have is the orb D shaped, which is moved from this plant to here. So these are the originals. I zoomed in down to shift. So that's moved from the fern to here. And this one here is moved away towards the plant. So that, you have two orbs, because it, you know, you've got one, so you could say, oh, well, it's dust. You know, the D-shaped orb, and uh, the movement to and from. So it, unless you've got a circular wind, you know, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, whatever. So this is, this, to me, is proof right this is my back garden taken well the fence is not there anymore and no the mirror no the mirror <laughs> well the mirror blew down didn't it and smashed so i oh. you know i've had those seven years and probably longer so what i've done is here's the edge of the um planter the edge of the planter um Fine mist was raining as it does in Wales, running down the mirror surface. Everything reflected in the mirror surface, right, is distorted. All of the orbs outside of the mirror surface are in focus or clear. So you've got the water running down the front, and anybody who wants to repeat any of the work, this probably would be your first port of call because these things now have physical structure which are reflected was it raining there Paul was it? yeah raining yeah misty so you can say well it's rain drops yeah. reflecting but uh, you know so out of the mathematics of string theory, they've created these cartoon-like characters, open and closed strings, whatever. These are the things that we've got. I think you've seen those in Ponty, but, you know, we've got a number of them. So we've got the D-brain and the clusters. So that's... So why not is string theory... You know, why isn't it biological and why isn't it? You know, we know the whole universe is biological. Well, it's got to have... So, Kelly um, drafted uh, a letter. She was the biochemist who set up Touchstone Health, uh, Touchstone Health, 2006, and wrote to 
Brian Green, but also we wrote to the world's leading quantum physicists. He did the ele elegant universe and yeah, and zero response. You know, you you keep on pushing these things forward, and you you take them into the science thing. You get nowhere with that. You take them to the spiritual thing, the spirits. You you get no no further than that because. Uh, it's a bigger picture than that. So that's the letter that we sent, and I've got Witten, I think it was Witten, Professor Witten, and a number of other people I wrote to. Uh, Kerry drafted that, as I said. So what we gained is, and you know, we can, I can talk about each individual one, but it's, it's going to just use up too much time. Sequence, sequenced, not sequenced, maybe sequenced, I don't know, it, you know, I'd have to go back to the record. Mm. Uh, Budlia, uh, Tinakoi, that was, those are uh, sequenced, those three there, a sequence, feeding trees, uh, D-shaped orbs on trees and vegetation, and that is what we came up with, that's what we came up for the book. How we, how we understood it, and I'm not going to labour it of how these things broke apart. And so that was the book, and uh, I got PDF copies if you want to take them, you can have them. Um, you know, you know, so we come to a point where what gets us into trouble is not what. I wouldn't even say that that's a proper quote because what gets us into trouble is is not is what we know, which is steered thinking by the controlling elite, mm -hmm. the controllers, and teach us how to think, rather than the divinity within each and every one of us. Right, the theosophists with a long history of being uh, rejected by the scientific community. Well, you know, it's, you know, if if anybody wants to take me on with science, I'll cross swords with them. You know, as I said, I um, the professor up in Birmingham when I questioned him about the constant speed of light or light in a vacuum, or vacuums. They may as well be the Richard Dawkins spaghetti monster, because they're only theoretical, yeah. and they fall apart if you question them. So anyway, so, if we, if we were right, you know, because this takes us back to probably 20, 20, 2007 you know we we gave a talk in 2003 to Dave and, and we suggested but if we were right on these things you know the dog seeing the bars and whatever and, and various other things us seeing the orbs in the flashlight and whatever and the peripheral vision um, we assumed that people saw this they must have seen this at a time, and you, then you have to have, uh, ask yourself many, many questions. But these are some of the questioning that we took place. That took place. So, I just want to point this out. This is uh, old now. You won't see this. This is the Scandinavian Society for Prehistoric Art. This is in um, <laughs> whatever language. <laughs> this I wrote to Mistral um, about, uh, and you can see him here painting the rock art. Um, he responded, it's in the book, a four and a half thousand years old rock art that, that I was referring to. And uh, he didn't quite catch on what I was saying. So he's painting that with a vegetable dye. There's another way where you can rub it and create the rubbing on it, or you can spray it with water and photograph it at night, 
but this is ancient petroglyphs, what they call petroglyphs, draw, drawing or glyphs on rock, right? Rock art. And that is what we got. So that is a ranging pole. Obviously when a Mr. Owl students or whatever, I used to look after them and take them and collate them and pair them. You know, I always were measured at 300. I don't know what these are. Um, three orbs linked together, D-shaped orbs. Let me show you the... Sorry? Like somebody's whitewashed them on. Yeah, but they did. They paint. Yeah, they, they painted it. Oh, right. You know the. You know the man I showed you. Yeah. Mister Al. Mm. He was painting them on. Okay. And then photographing them. I don't know whether I made that clear. Did I make that clear? Did I make that clear? He's, he's painting while well, he's painting in the, the engravings on the stones. Right. So were they. So, so where the, where they something? cut the cut the rock art. Mm. He's followed the detail, right. painted them, right. wa and obviously photographed them, because yeah. I was threatened to be sued for using his material. Okay. So what you're saying is that the, the ancients put that stuff on the rocks. And well, to tell us, to tell us what, what is happening, yeah. what and, is going to happen. He's, and he's found it, he's yeah, he's basically painted them so we can photograph them well, to show you what is on there. Well, I mean, you know, it's beyond, you know. So what, what we have here is the hook web orb we now call. So what, what you have is a, a rise up. That web attaches to a tree or whatever. That's a flat surface. That's a flat surface. That tapers in. That hooks up. That hooks up. And that was carved by our ancient ancestors here. Yeah. So our ancient ancestors saw this stuff yeah. and knew it. And they knew it. Be this is why we have serpent mythology. This is why we have um, fiery serpents, cherubim, seraphims. We do not, we haven't got a clue. And unless somebody's going to champion this, because it's, it's coming. Unless it's championed, it's going to go, it's, going to leave, oh, well, I'll, I'll carry on, because, uh, so, so that is uh, an ancient energy worker, that is four and a half thousand years, or older, they, they can't date the rock, they date the evidence around the rock, it's a man, it's got a hook web again, part of our data, data structure, you can see that, see the hook web, the, the hook there. We even got the bar conversion here. Right, I'm, this is a part I didn't want to show, right? But, you know, unfortunately I'm going to have to. So, um, this is from Bruce Lee. But it's a very Buddhist type of um, uh, thing. It's, and, it, and it goes something like this. It's like a finger pointing the moon to the moon. You look at the finger and you miss the moon. You will not see the moon. You will just look at the personality behind giving that talk. You know, so you're, everyone now is going to be looking at me. Everyone is capable of these things, right? Mm. And, and it, and just because they haven't, um, the magnetic field is so low, we do not see these things. It's, co it's coming to us. So, this is John, uh, what we got. You probably can't see it. There's a strand coming from here and a strand coming from here to the back of his hand. Most healers feel heat, static, charge in their hands. And the reason why they, the placebo whatever you want to call it is this thing what drives it and you know I'm not I may answer questions and, and so that's John working with energy down Tinkins Wood when he was a kid 
you were a teenager, weren't you? you know, once, weren't you? Once, sir. Yeah, once. But does that energy only come when you go to these mystical sites? No, no, no. 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 It's, it, so you, it's you everybody. Got it, no, if you, if you held your hand up and you photographed well, it. Yeah, it's a, well, uh, no, it... Yes and no, it's, it's quite a... With a weak magnetic field, it's going to be an inter intermittent thing. Mm. When the magnetic field strengthens, do, do you feel energy? Yeah, yeah. Right, hold your hand up. Do you ever break your elbow or... Can you feel the push, John? Is it from? <laughs> you feel something on there? Yeah. Is it, you haven't damaged your ribs if you're on our side. No. No, something. There's, push, there's something push it, push in oh, an right, energy yeah. field. Sorry. Yeah. 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 There's an energy field pushing out from the elbow. I would say it's tennis elbow or something like that, but I, I'm not sure where it's coming from. And obviously it's a. So anyway, so what you've got is orbs and. Um, they attach to people's hands and whatever. So, that is under a mi microscope. That is Northumberland rock art. And that is our study data. <coughs> and if you don't think that is similar, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's... So, what you have is the Buddha holding his hand out you've got Ganesh Christ holding a sphere two Egyptians holding their hands <coughs> uh, Chi Master and what we're brainwashed with which what what gets us into trouble Keanu Reeves holding his hand to life force in the day that the earth stood still and the petroglyphs we put a video up of um, was it John? Was it you and Matthew passing energy between themselves? So <coughs> these stickmen are four and a half thousand years old, mm -hmm. at least, and they've been painted, you know, by Mistral students. So that is uh, that is from our data, from our, you know, that is. Cup marks, rings, rings around the orb. Yeah, <laughs> I apologize. Because <laughs> the energies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a, this is a, a, some rock art. Uh, unpackers, there are unpackers in DNA which unpack DNA. You know, that was donated from a woman in America with the balls <sighs> you know that is hi highlighted rock art so I don't know you know we're living a lie basically so these are a, a thing called the geoglyph Nazca lines has anybody heard of those yeah well you won't have heard of these from Al Hayid because the Saudis will not let you know. You know, it's a wonder of the world. I think it should be, you know, it shows the old Bob White. That's 161 meters there. These can be seen from space. I don't know what we're looking at. Huh? Orbs. Oh, orbs. In, in the ground. No. That's to the satellite picture. That's a satellite picture of, from of, Google Earth. Of, what area is that on Earth? Al, Al Haid in Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay. All you've got to do is just A L H A I T. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can go and look at these things yourself. And you can zoom into them, but there's no archaeology done on them. You know, because. Right. I'll carry on. So, what we have is these are. Nazca, like the Nazca lines, they're carved into the earth. They're mm. geoglyphs. Mm. You know how wide they are. They can be hundreds of meters, three hundred meters, two hundred meters, fifty meters, ten meters. 
but they they carved into the earth and they how they're done whether the rocks are piled up or whatever i don't know because there's no archaeology done on them and nobody is going to tell you it so what you have is an orb with a bar and they're they're warning us of what is coming you know it's pretty it's pretty damn odd if everyone heard anyone heard of opec yeah. the fuel cartel yeah. Yeah. right organizing of the petroleum exporting countries that is from our data sets that is the OPEC logo these are Al Hadid these are uh, uh, geoglyphs these are from our data sets these are dots by the orb and eventually people will begin to understand it I don't understand much of it but I understand a lot of it so you've got rock art, you've got geoglyphs, you know, it's mind, it is mind-blowing. This is why, you know, there's a reluctance for me to, you know, come forward because all you get is like blank stares. I must apologise, but I've got to go to the hospital and visit oh, some. Yeah. yeah oh, all right. I did tell you, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cheers, Steve. Enjoy it. Yeah, yeah well, if you can. <laughs> so what you've got is out of the sun is producing orbs and our ancient ancestors believed that the the sun was conscious so does the osophist yeah. and I do is sort of but it's a reluctance it's not a human consciousness you know the human consciousness is different. However, you know, I haven't got evidence to back up the consciousness of the sun. But if you have a look at these things blasting off the sun, they're very much... Right, I'll carry on. Because you need to see it all, really. So these are uh, orbs with the dot in. Again, you get it. Orbs with a dot triangle. I can't quite explain, but there's a triangle in the orb there. So that's a geoglyph. They're thousands of years old, and nobody has bothered to look at them from Saudi Arabia. You know, or no archaeologist or anything. Hushed up. Don't don't tell anyone. And yet they're on the earth. They're there. So you think Saudi Arabia knows um, what they're for? Well, do you see the o OPEC logo? Do you think somebody knows something? Oh, probably, yeah. yeah. So what we have is the Keol, <laughs> right, rock art over by Pertia, and I don't know what it is, and probably, you know. But the Keol orb, tubes, tubes in orbs or Keol orbs, that's Northumberland rock art, that's our data sets. That is what is in the geoglyph, that is what is carved on rocks in Northumberland. You know, spot the difference, what is it? You, you know, you can, you know, occasionally somebody comes along, Galileo came along and pointed out certain things on his telescopes and people didn't believe it. You, you know, for then not to be a big, a big bang, and and not to be atheism in the back through the back door, or what it points to is there isn't a, such a thing as atheism. It's just a man-made construct, you know. Is uh... so anyway. So because of the rock art and the geoglyphs and the petroglyphs and what we what we've seen we thought it, it would be unthinkable that um, it not seen throughout time we didn't know how it occurred or why it occurred but we just thought right we're gonna have a look at it and we came across this so what we have is, right, I, I suppose 
I'm using up too much time and it's you know it's if you were to buy this from the Wiccan collection now right it's in the digital era so that tear is now gone those holes have now been taken out of the woodcut um, so it's changed now you would have to ask Zurich Central Library or the Wiccan collection or the holder the keep it within Zurich Library why have they changed it you can see the reference here and the ring why is it changed however what we from we got it translated orbs gaining mass and falling from the sky out of the tube let me show you some rock art first before I go on so anyone played jacks as a kid yeah. Yeah. all right four and a half thousand years old so what what you're now asking it's it Hans Glacier would cut this is and it's in basil and Nuremberg I think basil and Nuremberg I think they had although it's been seen throughout time uh, what 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 people can suggest is that uh, Hans Glacier walked over to Lil, Lil Strang Bagard in uh, that's Mistral Mistral or whatever um, and carved that in one of the Scandinavian rock art and then you know it was painted and whatever and painted on you know and unfortunately our ancient ancestors were telling us and we've muddied the waters of what they've said unfortunately prana chi exists in the form of the ore bar wave as far as I'm concerned or you know so where's that balloon what I'm gonna I'll, shall I show the video or I'll show them right sorry <laughs> right so you imagine now an orb or a bar right and the orb on the bar is now picking up charge I don't know John I put wax on my head can you uh, rub it <laughs> so um, what, you, what you've got now is the orb or the bar picking up charge background charge and uh, as it picks up charge you can hear that little fizz yeah. and obviously you can see it's picking a particle yeah. on the surface when lightning when lightning strikes even the bar or the orb they fall from the sky and you're going to say everyone's going to say what a load of I'm not bothering to go and see that man again right so I'm not I'm not going to they found magnetic bubbles in space all right so you know what they call magnetic bubbles no oh, that was the same thing. Same yeah, thing. Same thing. Uh, apart we from the we've done that as kids, haven't we? Done yeah. That to show you how to sit on a wall. Yeah. Say, yeah. But obviously, I cut down. Had the that's a dogger, uh, unfortunately named. I don't know why they named them that. But from uh, Smuggler's Coast, has anyone been to Dorset? I've been to Dorset. But I've never. Well, these are in the, the. There are hundreds of them, and they're hollow. Uh, basically what happens is they fall from the sky so we, we're chasing we're chasing that uh, orb fused orb so it's really confusing now but what we've done is been able to let go of any preconceived anything and come to the conclusions these, these are going to blow people away so volcanic ash which is the dust 
sticks to the orb, which is the charged, charged orb, and falls from the lightning strikes it and falls from the sky. So that is a sample that I've imported from the Utah. Cut down, it's got loose sand in it, it's hollow, and that's how the moon forms. And there's mythology about that as well, but I, I haven't included it because it becomes too long. So that is a sample that I've cut down. I scraped the loose sand out. I took this to the head of the geology department and said this would be like a fugalite. Under thin section, we create thin sections for things. I've got, I've got them here if you want to have a look at them. So you create the thin section and you look under the microscope and you say, oh, it's like a fugalite. So s simply, although nothing is simple, because our, our learning is going to get in the way of us. I charge, dust, the dust or particle is charged, pulls itself to the surface, like I've shown in the, or John, I, I waxed head, it didn't do it any favours. And then there's a fuse of roller. I, I was a copper. Did, I used to sell photocopiers at one time. Okay. Well, I didn't, didn't sell them. I had a franchise for them. I had people working for me who I, I used to design interiors mainly, but you know. Anyway. This is a fugalite, and these are, that's a thin section there. Norman did that for me in the university. And again, as I said, I took it to the head of the geology uh, department, and uh, I showed him this fellow before it was cut, and I told him what he would see, which is that of a fugalite, which is this thing here, and it was. And then he sort of scratching his head and thinking, well... That's not what we've been taught. No, he was fair enough. So you've got the three rings on here, the three rings on the orb. Have you got any of them blue now? Yeah, well, I got one with three on there. In in one of them. I don't know what I'm selling that one, though, but. Uh. Uh, just to show. So, stones falling from the sky in 1921 in Chico. At the end of the Lassen Peak ex er eruption, explains it. And they fall, fell for four months. And these were called uh, the Shaman Stones by the American Indians, or the Hoppy, or Thunderballs. <laughs> yeah, the, tr the trouble is, right. Now, and this, uh, you know, some of the some of the experiments that I've run, right? If you read these reports, they hover to the ground. So that, so so when uh, Studley investigated this, there was another reporter from. Have you heard of Charles Fort, the Fortean Times? Yeah, the Fortean Times. Charles, Charles, what, what's it called? Fortean, isn't it? Fortean Times is the. Yeah, well, Charles, Charles, Charles Fort yeah. sent one of his reporters in, well, in 1921 or beyond, or, or whatever, to have a look and investigate why, the, and it was her report, which probably, if, you, if you've got links with the Fortean organisation. Yeah, well... They hovered to the floor, and she saw she saw them. And Professor Studley didn't know where the the rocks they fell for four months. Did they kill anybody or not? No, they didn't. Oh, that's amazing. Well, because they they were hovering. Yeah, I mean that's. That yeah, well, it's two two magnetic fields rotating. Yeah. Is careering down from you're going to smack. Well, yeah, but it, the, but I was I was kicked off a uh, astronomy website. For suggesting how these processes worked, so that's a hollow. Um, that's in New Zealand. God, you should get kicked off the, yeah, yeah, you can kicked off of loads. <laughs> but you know, even if you're in the minority of one, you can still be right. Well, when you see things like that, you can prove it. I mean, 
See this man here? He, well, obviously a Frenchman. Well, not that <laughs> anyone, not that anyone can tell. But uh, this is a woodcut. Hans Lee's your woodcut. That is uh, the Godpole Crater on Mars. Those are the monoliths. These are uh, art artists from um, 1400s or whatever. Um, fiery serpents, you know. And I can explain how that works. But, you know, it's not worth going into that. So, he's, he's walking across the field in France somewhere. Here's a thud. Picks up a cannonball object, which is warm. Which is what you would, what I would be expecting. Uh, because of the translation of the hands cage woodcut, it, things were warm. Steam appeared. You have a Flemish artist and you have beams of light. I have not covered the consciousness. Just I'm just not covering the consciousness. The drive, what drives it. I'm, I'm not going to go there. Can I ask why? I, I can't answer that. I, I, you know, because I, I wouldn't lie to a friend. I wouldn't suggest something that may or may not be true. I'd uh, I'm sure the friend would take it on board or not. Huh? Oh, oh, the I mean, it's not, it's not of consideration. Yeah. The Osophists maintain that consciousness trying to find expression is really the driving force behind the universe. Mm. Of course, that is true. We don't have a problem with consciousness, you know. Consciousness everything. drives the universe. Yeah, everything has consciousness. Everything, you know, and once you understand that, you're standing in the eyes of what some people call God. Mm. Others don't. And it has been a, since the near-death experience that, well, the couple that I had, didn't I? Um, it's been humbling. You know, I want to go home. But uh, people don't understand that. You, you know, here's a, here's a book. Um, you know, references. We have the spike orb here and the oldest fossil record and the Alman Almanac of the Information, you know. And there's references from 1962 and whatever the, you know, whatever the, their age are. You know, whatever the, whatever the... You see, science has... And what I'm saying is science has proved that a bumblebee can't fly and yet we see it flying. Aerodynamically, it can't fly, yet it flies. We know the calories of migratory birds uh, can't make the migration with the calories they've taken on, and yet still do it. We have um, DNA as the mechanism of evolution. Uh, blind cavefish haven't lost their DNA for their eyes. So if somebody's telling us something that ain't true, it still has the DNA, so there's no evolution on that DNA strand. You know, they, you know, science is just paid science, basically. And I can tell you, so, Dark Man and Dark Energy, I'm going to show this video because uh, this is a... Uh, no, it's the di Disclosure Project. This is what they're seeing in magnetic fields of uh, space. Uh, 
and you can say, oh, well, they're aliens in spaceships, but they're not. It's what we're made of. You know. So, so what you have is a uh, cutout and a hole. Right. Like Yeah. You see, this is by the biochemist, uh, Kerry, said, um, you know what, you've got biolo biological processes and, you know, she, uh, we were showing them, we didn't know what we had. You can see by that thing there, the way it's starting to split yeah. two. Dividing. Yeah. So that was taken on Pontypreth Common and that was taken in space. And it isn't an alien space spaceship that's three to four miles wide it's the stuff that sits in the magnetic fields so as you get closer to the magnetic fields you will start to see it so even even that that the octagonal or pentagon or whatever within it's not to get frightened of these things. You've just got to go with them and go on and keep on researching them. You've got uh, the wall, you know, three ridges on, the, on one of the moons of Saturn. You know, it's like, oh, hang on a moment. And you, you form your planets by a vacuum that didn't exist, by gravity, and everyone believes it. You know, and they don't prove it to themselves. No, actually, science has never explained how primordial dust <laughs> forms itself. Oh. Into yeah, but it does, and you've got to believe them, haven't you? Yeah, but it, it forms itself into organised sidereal systems. Ah, that's right, to such yeah. an extent that you know, will know on the 3rd of March 2067. That's right. It's going to be a partial eclipse of the sun. Yeah. But then Hathaway, who made a 20, uh, uh, prediction, He's a, Hathaway's a leading NASA scientist, solar scientist now, made a prediction that, that our sun was going to go into a solar maximum. And it actually went, you know, the cycle up and yeah. down and up and down. Yeah. And he said it was going to be the most active sunspot that we've ever seen. And unfortunately, the New Age movement grabbed hold of that and mirrored what Hathaway was saying and only myself and Morris Cottrell who was, uh, who was an engineer who studied the Mayans knew that it was going to go into minimum and now we have a white sun we have a lack of sunspot for those who remember the orange sun can you remember as a child? Well, you are, you know. Sorry, I lived in Burnley, so we didn't see the sun very much. All right, no one. Well, yeah, but whales, you know. So, so anyway, so this primordial matter, or you know, the golf. There's a golf ball crater. You know, this. Why I was kicked off? An object this big will make a larger crater. Object coming in at 20,000 should have caught over the crew to half mile. They, they hover down now, right? So, you know, you only have to repeat one or two Lockheed Martin um, experiments to know that gravity is not a constant. And I put some of those up on YouTube, but nobody is interested. So, if you now imagine the balloon. It's now picking up charge traveling through the earth and picking up charge and onto its surface, picking up dust and falling onto the surface of Mars being charged. So Mars has a magnetic field, should have. It should have volcanoes, should have. This is, or, or dust storms, or, or something that pushes the dust into the atmosphere and it fuses to the bar. The uh, Hubble image, our image, you know, you only have to have a look at those. There's a chappy called Martin Stubbs who did the NASA missing transmissions, and that's worth a look at if uh, anyone doubts what I'm saying. But of course, you know, he, he ended up dead 
for what what reason I don't know. Uh, they said it was a heart attack, but he was younger than me, a lot younger than me. Canadian broadcaster um, Martin with a Y. So, if you have a look at th these uh, Nikon images, you know. Mm. On the rocks, eh? Yeah, drawn on the rocks. <laughs> See, it's trying coming out right. So, the ethers, the nadis were in the blood, or nadi, or uh, have you heard of that mm. Sanskrit idea of um, prana or chi moving through the blood, or mm. right? That's uh, mystic. Language of the soul. So what we have is a picture of uh, all attached to Badlia. How we work this out, I don't know, but there we go. I would eat that. Those are my grounds. So you have uh, orb and webs and whatever. As above, so below. So that's fairly <laughs> gravitational lensing. You've got to laugh. You, you know, the, the lies that we're told. What gets us into trouble is what we know for sure that just ain't so. You know, everyone here can think of me as a nutcase. I'm quite happy with that. But just remember, people still see orbs day to day I was talking to one of the students and he said I've seen it and I, I was laughing <laughs> you know when I, I met him and uh, that's a gravitational lens in effect this is what they've seen on the telescope from Hubble or whatever it is and can, that is uh, from our data these are uh, as above so below Use an electron microscope or whatever. Electron microscope, our data, our data, electron microscope, even the shape. Yeah, even the unique shape. So, we know we're bombarded by waves and bars and all sorts of stuff. You know, we know that the radio broadcasts. If we were to see this, this would cause us major problem. So, see, even if we saw the sky broadcast wave, you know, we got to receive it. You know, even the concept of it, it's like people going to go, oh, hang on. Or a telephone, oh, well, it just works. No, hang on a moment, that's a physical wave that's coming into the phone. It's just not seen by the cryptochromes in our eyes. So it, it doesn't really matter whether you're mobile or wireless network or whatever. These are wave functions that are affecting us. So we come to science. We, we come to science. Isaac Newton, occult studies. He believed what the theosophists believed. Well, there's a spirit world and there's consciousness and I'm not, I'm not suggesting. But how have we got this atheism through the back door? Einstein was... Don't get me started. <laughs> Plagiarised the theory of re relativity and even that is not correct. Hypothetical, non-observable portions of the universe so how do they know well it's just a just a drawing may as well use a kid's drawing the magnetic field of the earth is declining we all know that or oh, all of science knows that so what happens if it, if it increases? Well, we can have a look at the God helmet or the Persinger helmet. 
you pulse electromagnetic fields into the brain and oh, you know it doesn't explain God but you have a, a euphoric so people why are there so many wars in, in this Kali age or the age car does it, everybody know the Kali age yeah. you're all familiar with it well it's the depletion of the magnetic field and Kali is just we enter into uh, a like slumber we forget things we forget what it's like to live in a strong magnetic field so the activation of pigeons circle three times in a row, cryptochromes, blah, 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 blah. it's hinted that they can see electromagnetic field. Now we've seen that with my dog. So these cryptochromes are, uh, uh, so what happens when the earth spin now goes from a low energy field and starts spinning quicker. So we're on the we're on the age and I'm not sure whether this is a, a belief or whatever of an increased spin. Not massively, but the magnetic field is going to increase. The, so, the youth, please, we'll go back to the golden age. That's right. So we'll go, and and all, all, all the golden ages is a strong magnetic field. So simply, but it's been muddied. You, you, you. Know, I'll, I'll play. I, I wrote to um, Jeffrey Stray a long, long time ago. This is prior to twenty twelve. So he's talking about ancient mythology now. Uh, in the Inca system, we mentioned the uh, the overworld and the underworld coming together. Uh, in the Chinese system, it would be heaven chi and earth chi meeting. Uh, yang and yin it's, it's all the same thing so these jacuzzi like bubbles so as the earth increases its spin and we kill off the linear mechanistic model of Einstein and whatever as the rotation of the magnetic as the rotation of the earth quickens milliseconds now we're not talking about huge amounts of time cells will divide quicker we will live longer all of the things that we've been told and there is many many other implications to it but effects of magnetic fields on wound healing so if we do a low level magnetic field to a wound, it will heal 25% quicker than not. Fiddler clamps regenerate their limbs quicker in a magnetic field. It was done, there's science publications on it. So we're just living in a low magnetic field. And in those magnetic fields, orbs are seen. Effects of cosmic rays on our, our, you know, they call it cosmic rays, it's, you know. They see light flashes, they see bars. Very much the stuff that Martin Stubbs was recording back in the 90s. These things are seen. Think, you know, sharing energy, whatever. Orbs. You know. We've got thousands of images. If anybody wants to scroll through them, they're quite welcome to it. But uh, so we have Hoppy mythology of Spider Grandmother, a solar system ley line, or a solar system energy field or magnetic field. So, uh, I'll play this for you, if I can. I'm laughing because I, it's just so funny. 
so funny that the academics have got this so wrong. So this is a NASA Voyager simulation of the vacuum of space, which is not a vacuum because it's got all these particles running in it. And there's anomalous, I call it the Nantaro effect, for anybody who's... And it's, uh, our ancient ancestors knew that, Nantaro. There is an upper, upper Swansea Valley stone circle called Nantaro, the stream from Taurus. The Taurus stream. So we got energy moving and consciousness. i got to go back to what Dave said is that consciousness is the driver of these things. I'm reasonably happy to say that here. So does anyone want to watch that again? Because if you've got a vacuum of space... How was that filmed, did you say? Oh, that's a simulation from NASA. Oh, okay. So the... Yeah. So NASA will put a simulation together of work. how things work. And they've, got all, they've simulated all that stuff in the background. And they simulated particles of charge mm. in a vacuum. Mm. Yeah. You know, and then this Voyager probe, Voyager, sent out, has come across these magnetic fields. And the magnetic fields are nothing more than spider grandmother mythology. In fact, serpents move on them as well. Serpents moving on the old bar wave. I haven't showed all, all the data. You know, but I can ramble on and at the end of the day we've got better things to do. So it's difficult for a man to understand things. These I remember seeing to Peter, Peter Hodges, who wrote a quote for the book that I wrote. I said, you want to burn that? His doctor had right? And he said to me, you know, and I don't believe in tectonic plates. I believe, you know, there's many, many things of, if you've got a magnetic field and you've got energy moving on, they're cause uplift. So rather than, rather than tectonic plates, magnetic uplift. You only have to have a look at two cars in a shunt. You know, when they hit each other, the crumple zone, so the red car is going to be next to the blue car or whatever, and the crumple zone is going to be it. So what all, you, you know, when the continents collide, you should have different rocks, different colors, different whatever. All, all the all the crumble zone should be by the coastline, or or where the two continents are met. Uh, you know, and we shouldn't have them, you know, inland, and we shouldn't have them, you know, because the crumple zone. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Tectonic plate, t tectonic plates, because the mythology tells you. We know the orb bar wave moves through us. And felt. You know, I can show some other videos if you want. But so, what we have. So, as we get bombarded by this magnetic uh, energy, as our sun goes into solar minimum, our shields get, go down, and more and more energy comes into our magnetic field, comes into our core separates positive from negative and that's why uh, uh, blast frozen mammoths have been found because it's blasting off the uh, magnetic poles so here's a video of the sun i'm gonna tr it's mm -hmm. taken a little bit too long really i should have shortened it off but Here's a video of an orb forming from the sun. Can you see them? And uh, we have the Bandar Archi earthquake. At, you know, I'm, I've been kicked off this as well. You know, a blast off the sun. And uh, they're recorded in geoglyphs, as they say. Strands. So what you've got is a displacement 
of the corona from the sun. It's done by so Soho. See the old form of that? It's pushing, it, pushing the energy away. You can't see it. So this is... Uh, if you look face on, you can't see it. If you look side on to the edge of the sun, you can see it displacing the corona. And is this actual time, or is it speeded up, or what? Um, well, it's running... You, when you go onto the Helio Viewer, you can choose, which is Soho, it uses, you can choose a certain filter, and you can choose um, increments of time, because it's taking photographs. Uh, probably these are at 15 minute intervals. But it could be, it could be less. I, I don't know what I said it to, it doesn't really matter. You, you can choose day advances, because the rotation, there's two, you know, Morris Cottrell was uh, dealing with those um, torsion fields within the sun, a differential mass. So anyway, so probably every 15 minutes normally. So the Kali Yuga is um, really just to do with the spin and the spin rate of the sun of the earth and that, well and the sun it doesn't really matter what it is and the energy coming in from outside is just doors open doors closed and it will allow um each of these yugas to take place now i've struggled with these because it, it it's a a struggle with the understanding because I see it as from a high energy to a low energy and then the energy fills back up and it goes from high to low again now these yugas some say these yugas go lie low to high um, sorry, high to low and then low back round to high I'm not so sure that's the way it works but I'm quite happy to I'm not sure I would say that energy pours in then and we've got a high energy state and it's a change of age do you know what I mean? We just yeah. change from a low magnetic field to a high magnetic field, and then it dwindles down, and then we, we enter into a period of output of our sun, and it may... So, did people have uh, longer lifespans than 200 years? You, you know, you can, you can enter into cells dividing because they're around magnetic poles there's, there's studies and research for this but the drugs companies are not going to tell you that they're not going to tell you that uh, you know magnetic healing actually works you know because they can't patent it <clears throat> so I, I'm going to leave uh, obviously I, I've left this in but uh, it's of a lungfish and uh, if we describe all fish like a lungfish, you know, breathes air and whatever it does, and looks like an eel, and whether it is a true fish or not, I, I'm not really interested. But if we if we describe every fish as a flying fish, we're equally wrong. So all your your people who are interested in orbs, they can all oh, yeah, the spirits you know, people and there's some partial truth in that. When people know, when they think they know the answers, people are difficult to guide. When they do not know, people can find their own way. So I, I would suggest, and I, I'm going to conclude with that, I would suggest that anybody who's interested in finding uh, what I've said out 
is true. Get a get a mirror, take some photographs in the rain. See the reflected image in the in the mirror, and you can then decide for yourself. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's twenty years for you. Well, or more. <laughs> I've never even contemplated that. I mean, theosophists believe that space is just full of sentient life anyways. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, well, and you, you have the proof of it, though. Exactly. You know, you have the proof of it. Yeah. So, you know, it's like... But we all know that, don't we? We all know it. Mm. Uh, are, are we inside our body or outside our body? Where's thought come from? Well, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, you don't we don't we all know that? You started off with your, your talk saying that, 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 you know, that the public is is misled. You talk about uh, space being a vacuum, and that's what people believe, don't they? Well, space is a vacuum, the no, constant no, speed no, of light, no, and no, yet no, the, no, the speed of light. No. If you have a look at Sheldrake's work, Science Set Free, he's written a book. Uh, the speed of light altered by 20 kilometers per second okay. slowed well you know when, when did it slow oh, the 20s to the 40s what were they doing at that time well increasing the energy of the planet because they do nuclear testing probably I'm not I'm not saying unless there's research on it you know I'm just saying that's you know, what we'd expect, the collapsing of the wave, the slowing down of light, uh, you know, and it's like, you, you know, how are these people so stupid to believe the vacuum of space? You know, when there's a probe in there, well, that's not a vacuum. We don't, we don't have any other information, you see, we rely on scientists. Uh, we only accept mobile oh, they, phones work because scientists tell us how that they work. Yeah, but they don't know either. No, but oh. they, 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 you see, we, no, so mobile phones are not magic as they would have been 200 years ago because science has explained that they work even though we don't know. We just them use work. them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, shall we, are we ready for a cup of tea? Yeah. Okay, okay, I think. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.